When Next version 13 originally released with server components, one of the biggest controversies was something that was honestly a little bit silly. It was the fact that they overrode fetch on the server. I use the quotes for a reason. Overriding fetch is kind of a hard thing to do because especially on the server, fetch doesn't really exist. Somewhat recently, there is kind of fetch built into Node, but that's because they took DC and bundled it in. As such, the idea of fetch as this golden standard that nobody can screw with has always felt a little weird to me, but at the same time, your framework taking over fetch is kind of weird too. They had a good reason for this, which we'll get into in a bit. We're not here to talk about the good parts of why this exists. We're here to talk about the removal of this. Yes, believe it or not, the React team changed their mind and has now removed the automatic overriding of fetch in order to cache all things that occur inside of React using fetch calls. In order to understand why this is important, we should go over what this did in the first place. Let's say we did this and we were just rendering this data in our component. Now we'll render one user profile. Totally fine, normal, this does what you expect. This data is coming from the GitHub API. We're calling it, we have it here, and we're stringifying it and putting it in the page content. What happens if I do this multiple times? Now I have four instances of this component. Or let's say, instead of this being here, I have a function that's like async function. Oh, look at that, it already was smart enough. And I have this get GitHub profile function. And I call this in here, but I also call it in here, const user profile equals await get GitHub profile. That seems to be async too. I was like, I have it here because I want to have div info for user.name. And then I have all of these. If we let fetch work the way it traditionally does, then we do the first call to the GitHub API here. So now we've done one call. And then for all four of these components, we're now doing four more of the same call. Even though the URL is the same, the arguments are the same, everything's the same. When the user goes to our web page, which is just slash, like the homepage for our app, we now are doing five calls to the GitHub API. That's not great, especially since they're all gonna return the exact same things. They're all happening roughly at the exact same time. It's just massively increasing the amount of load necessary to actually load the data you want. What the React cache did and what the overriding of fetch did was make it so that in a given request, so when I'm going to this web page, as it generates the response for this one page, it would patch the fetch call. So once the call is identified to be identical as previous calls, it only uses the data from the cache. It's effectively deduping by letting you make the call one time and then using that same data in all future calls within the same request. So if you refresh the page, it's going to update the data. But if you don't, on the first load or whichever load you're doing, it only has to make an identical API call once. This is one of those things that just made obvious sense, and that's why it was baked into Next and also React. We don't know if it's gonna be removed from Next or not, but I can say with relative certainty it will be because they're following the React team's decisions very closely. The reason I am concerned is that this is kind of the obvious way to write something like this, and the obvious way now has performance implications. Generally speaking, I like it when the obvious solution is also a performant one, and now the obvious solution isn't. And if we go back to this pull request that was made by ACD Lite, you'll see that they have removed the automatic patching of global fetch functions in server component environments to dedupe requests using the React cache, which is a behavior that some IRC framework maintainers have objected to. Interesting that other framework maintainers haven't liked this behavior. We may revisit this decision in the future, but for now, it's not worth the controversy. Yep, this is my issue here too, is it feels like this isn't necessarily the right decision for React developers, but due to the controversy, they're making this decision. Annoying. Frameworks that have already shipped this behavior, like Next, can re-implement it in user space. I considered keeping the implementation in the code base and disabling it by setting enable fetch instrumentation to false everywhere. But since that also disables the tests, it doesn't seem worth it because without test coverage, this behavior is likely to drift regardless. We can just revert this PR later if desired. Yeah. So now if you want to cache things, you would call react.cache yourself. There's a lot of ways to do this. Honestly, the way I would do this is const gh profile equals react.cache, do I have the react space there? Cool, I forgot this is get GitHub profile, cool. So now with this wrapping of the react cache helper, this will now be cached the same way. It is quite annoying that we have to do this ourselves, but it's not the worst thing in the world. GitHub profile at JSON's called twice. Oh yeah. I'll just json.stringify, I don't need to await that anymore. I just put the gh profile in here, cool. Good fix, thank you chat. IMO touching standard JS function implicitly is not good DX. The issue is 
fetch on the server isn't standard. It's not like, like it might feel standard as a JavaScript dev, but fetch on the server has been a very controversial thing for a long time. The other annoying part here is that this patch didn't just affect when you called fetch in your own code. Imagine if instead of await fetch, this was await github SDK dot get user and that there was some other code somewhere else. I'll just make a fake github SDK dot TSX. So like pretend this code isn't in your code base. We just have export async function get user username cool or i'll just define this async function export default get user cool so now if i import github sdk github sdk that get user since i have this wrapped in react cache it's fine but wouldn't it be nice if the github sdk itself could take advantage of this caching this is what i'm annoyed about is that every time I call anything that has an obvious cache behavior, which is in this case, I think pretty clear that the async function get user always fetches the same shape with the same inputs, we shouldn't really have to worry about caching this at the higher level. The fact that everything that might be called twice or more in your React server side app now needs to be wrapped in cache sucks. So that's why I am frustrated because it would have been really nice if whatever SDK you pulled in just worked because redundant fetch calls were made cached and would dedupe automatically. It's obnoxious that we're now going to have to see like an insane number of these react.cache calls in our code bases, but it does seem like the only way to keep everybody happy while also providing this functionality. I'm just upset because the defaults were more than good enough here and got us through a ton of stuff. Everybody's saying things like, there's a lot of chatter saying like, why don't they rename it? Why don't they provide their own fetch? Why don't they do all these other things? Again, imagine this GitHub SDK code doesn't exist in your code base. In here it does because it's the demo, but imagine this is a package you installed. You can't change which fetch call a package is making on your behalf. And I also want to remind everybody, this is only on the server side. It even says here that this is function in server component environments. So this only occurs during a given request. So if I request the website and you request the website at the same time, when I make the request, all of the things that are dedupable in that request get done once instead of n times. They're not gonna hit my cache when you make your request. They're not gonna hit my cache when I make my next request either. Per request, duplicated work is deduped. It just makes a lot of sense. And it's really weird to me that people push back as hard as they did here. SDKs cannot tell the access pattern and caching strategy around your app. SDKs cannot do it for you, unless they definitely know the caching strategy at this point, and they would put the right HTTP headers. Yeah. Calling current user in a bunch of places, and it only calls DB once, is the best part of the new APIs. Yes. Sadly, you have to wrap this yourself now, but to be fair, if you were using something like a database or something that isn't traditional fetch-based calls, you probably had to wrap this in cache already. It's just sad, because I'm, you know, I'll ask chat. One's if you've used React Cache before, two's if you haven't. One, if you've used this before, two, if you haven't, three, if you've never even heard of it before this. See all those threes? Most people didn't even know about this API. I think this is an important point to make. Not many people know about React Cache yet. Should they? Probably. Did they need to? Not before. But this is why I'm annoyed, because it feels like we're caving to the mob to make slower apps. Yeah, it's a really good API, especially when you combine it with things like the unstable cache in Next, where you can cache per keys. It's super powerful. Fetch in Next was the problem most people had. No, the, the problem they had was that fetch is this golden child you're not allowed to touch. Like, nobody who was mad about the fetch thing knew what it was actually doing. They just knew fetch behaved differently in React and Next than behaved other places, therefore angry. But like, Every framework author that does server-side stuff already knew, very clearly so, that you had to implement fetch some amount yourself in every other framework. Like even Nuxt has done some crazy stuff to make fetch work in the first place. So I just, I fundamentally disagree. Yeah. All of a sudden, everybody cares about what's happening under the hood. You're using an SDK, so you're giving up an abstraction. Caching is good. Yes. You can't make it an optional toggle though. That's the thing. Like it's not that simple because it fundamentally changes how you write the code. Next's caching being weird and fetch caching being useful are two different unrelated things. It's not annoying though. Now it's just like a data loader from GraphQL. So data loaders in GraphQL are very annoying for a billion reasons. I shouldn't have to explain that to y'all. Like data loaders in GraphQL are an obnoxious pattern that requires so much boilerplate that makes no sense for most applications. The reason I'm concerned is the simple demo of a user profile component that calls fetch went from 
using nothing that really looks specific to React to requiring that you deeply understand this new primitive and that you wrap everything with it religiously. The thing that you can't do anymore, the thing that I liked to do a lot, and I expect many apps to do in the future, is simple. It's this. You can't do this anymore. You can't just await a fetch call. You have to wrap that some way or another. That sucks. This is much worse pattern than anything we've talked about with fetch here. The idea that a get could result in changes occurring on your infrastructure level. Gets shouldn't have side effects. Yeah, this isn't caching, it's deduping. This is a very fair point from Zico. And honestly, I actually fully agree. The react.cache should not have been .cache, it should have been dedupe. Because the point here isn't that this gets cached between requests or that this call can't be invalidated or any of those things. It's that when you make this call multiple times in one render, it all happens at once. It's just, it's it, the context where this cache lives is so small that it feels annoying. And the the problem that I think people had when they were all freaking out over the next caching and fetch stuff is they combined different problems in their head. They acted as though, and I'll admit, I know like this video is explicitly not sponsored by Vercel. They're gonna give me shit for it later, that's fine. The rollout of Next's caching behaviors was garbage. I fully understand why people would be upset after how obnoxious it was to identify what was and wasn't being cached in their Next applications with server components. It was really obnoxious to know if a page would be cached, why it was being cached, why it wasn't being cached, when the cache would be invalidated, all of those things, specifically the fact that they use magic variables, like export const dynamic equals whatever. And the only way you can know this is type safe is if you manually change your workspace environment to use the TypeScript version for the workspace because VS Code won't use that by default. And now we get the TypeScript autocomplete for this where you could force dynamic for the page. The fact that this was kind of necessary to have your page actually rerun every time you go to it is dumb and annoying. And they didn't do a good enough job explaining this to you at all. This should have, like if they wanted to make a behavior as complex as like route level caching that is dependent on which headers you consume in which places, this cache should have been communicated way better with dev tools. Where if I was like running this, uh, bun run dev, and here we have my profile information on GitHub too many times. We don't know if this page is being cached or not anywhere near easily enough. And if we make changes to it, or if I like comment this out, this page should technically be static, but we don't really see here if it is or isn't. It's hard to know what behavior this page does and doesn't have. And that's what's annoying to me is that it's way too hard with Next's cache to know what isn't isn't being cached. That's a problem. We should give them some shit for it. They are working on it. I'm excited to see what they do. But the fact that Next's global route level cache was hard to understand and had edge cases and not necessarily the best defaults. That is, again, a different problem from deduping fetch calls on the server side per request. This is my frustration, though. And one more thing I didn't like about the original implementation, they explicitly cached post requests, not just get. So it wasn't just I'm fetching things from a server. It was also I'm posting things to a server. The reason that they allowed posts to be cached is because all GraphQL calls go through post, which is yet another anti-pattern that GraphQL enables. So if you were, instead of doing a traditional fetch, you were fetching from a GraphQL endpoint here, that call would have to be a post call. So they had to cache that too, which was really dumb. The counter argument there is that you shouldn't be doing post calls per render, which I think is fair. An anti-pattern I'm surprised I haven't seen more and I would expect to see more in the future would be something like do logging where we have like a separate endpoint that's like log and we put in here like method post body user info, um, timestamp, whatever else we want to put because we want to log that this user went to this page. This sucks. And I'm expecting a lot of people to do stuff like this in the future. And if you were doing something here that wasn't a log, that was a fetch call instead, it's hard for them to know if you intend to get data or if you intend to do something stupid here like posting. For all of these reasons, I'm not entirely against removing this. But I do think that this significantly increases the educational burden for explaining these changes, explaining these new patterns, and making sure people do things the right way. I have a lot of concerns that people are going to write really suboptimal code and not wrap the right things in cache. Yeah, it just it, the default of like having three different components that make the same fetch call now requires that you abstract that fetch call into a loader that they're all calling from. And I don't think that is better for a lot of cases. I think it is slightly more standard, but it's more standard in a space where there never really was one, which is server side fetch. So uh, yeah, those are my hot takes. My concern with React Cache is now how would a beginner differentiate between it and use memo? Yeah, all these things are named terribly and should be rethought. Oh, get's not explicitly allowed to have a body and therefore folks like CloudFront will error if you pass it. Okay, that's fair. I guess GraphQL not being able to use get isn't 
GraphQL's fault. Vercel is going to charge for cache reads and writes in the future. It's free now for a while in beta. Not for this cache. Again, you guys are mixing up the dynamic route level behaviors with fetch calls being deduped. This should not be named React Cache. This should be named React Dedupe. I wish they did this. Shout out to Zika for proposing this name because this would have been much better. I actually much prefer this and it's going to make people more confused. But this isn't a memory cache. This isn't memoization. This is one specific thing. This is making it so on a given request to your page, fetch calls are deduped. Or in this case, GitHub profile calls are deduped. So you only have to make this call once. This code only has to run one time. I'll show you in the demo. Cool. React cache. Here we'll let count equal one. Okay, we'll start at zero. Cool. So we're going to log every time this gets called. You know what? I should move this code to the SDK in quotes. And theoretically, this call should only happen once because the cache instance shouldn't change. Okay, get a profile, get a profile, cool. So now when I load this page, go to the terminal. It's getting hit twice still? Why is it getting hit twice still? Oh no, it's because the page instance was still, or the um, server side instance was still up and it persisted the state. Yeah, it only calls it once per request. Yeah, that was just a dumb like state being persisted between attempts thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, again, like this is why this is good because we're only calling this get user thing once. If I was to delete this wrapper and we just call this directly and I was to change this to be uh, next, I don't even remember what the uh, cache rule is here. Is it cache? Cache, no cache, cool. Now when I load this page, it should call it each time. So for all of the components that are using get user, it's now getting called. If I go back to the fetch and I comment that out and I reload the page again, I'm gonna kill the server so I clear the value. Did this change already go through? Yeah, I think this change already must have went through then, if that's happening there. Yeah, I guess this change already made it through because it's not letting me cache this. Can I manually cache it? Force cache, interesting. Seems like that just doesn't work how I would have expected it to. Good to know. And then if I wrap this again with the React cache primitive here, no caching going on there. Now it only gets hit once again. This should be the default. Hopefully this emphasizes my point properly, like getting this stuff right is annoying. And if you're using the same data in multiple places, you shouldn't have to put a lot of work into doing that. You should be able to do the obvious thing of calling the same fetch and have it behave properly. It is also worth noting that the next cache gets invalidated if you pass any unique headers. So if you had like headers here and you had like a cookie passed in, it just would not cache this anymore. They're pretty good about these things. And if you do want things to be cached between requests, the link that Gabriel just shared to the unstable cache is very, very handy. This lets you cache things between requests. So if I go to a web page, I get some data, and I don't want to have to get it again the next time. So if I go back to here, and I refresh this like five times, this got requested each of those times. If I don't want that to happen, I can use the next unstable cache instead. It's actually annoying, so I want to use the username in the input here. So I'm going to keep doing that the same way. Instead, I'm going to use this in the page. Cool. So I'll throw this here. We're going to wrap this in unstable cache instead. I'm manually passing this t3.gg, so I'm just going to pass that here as the key. But now, when I load this, we get the zero call. And now future loads don't have to call get user at all. See all these new page loads I'm doing? And none of these have resulted in new get user. That's because the next unstable cache caches things between requests, which is really, really handy if you don't want to have to like go over an API limit that you have for your service. If you're getting rate limited, you don't have to fetch duplicate data if you do something like this. Super, super handy. But again, this is a new unstable cache entity from Next. And this is very different from the React cache we were just talking about. Again, React cache should be renamed React dedupe, almost certainly. The unstable cache is a different thing in Next that allows between requests to have caching going on. Lee has a great video breaking down caching as a whole. So yeah, hopefully this is a helpful overview of all of the different ways you can cache things inside of React and Next and also why these things are so controversial. I liked this override. I get why it exists. I also see why people don't like this override and don't want it to exist. I'm happy we're moving forward, but I am a little bit scared we're caving to the people who are upset, not the ones who are actually using the things. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Am I just being silly and fetch is this golden thing we shouldn't touch? Or is there actually value in what React did here originally? Let me know in the comments and flame me all you want. I'm excited to read them in the future. Till next time, peace nerds.